Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Dr. Mulder, and on the other line I have my co-host, and her name is... Oh, State my your name, please. My born name right on my gift certificate on my gift certificate <laughs> is <Your> gift uh, certificate. <laughs> Little Miss Stell. <laughs> Little Miss Stell. And tonight we have a special guest, uh, and I have nicknamed her Little Miss Balboa. Yes, after Rocky, Balboa. Now, Little Miss Balboa, how are you doing this fine evening? Uh, I am very well. Thank you both so much. I am very excited to be on with you too. I've been a long time listener since the show's conception, so it has been a dream of mine to be able to come on somehow. So I feel like this is manifestation right here. So I'm very, very thrilled. Well, thank you. Awesome. And uh, thank you. yes, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, met little Miss Balboa um, over in um, Las Vegas at the conference, and uh, she is just a, uh, uh, you know. A very, very peppy young lady, I have to say, and a tad outspoken. Now, I was really impressed with her, and, uh, and uh, you know, she was just, uh, I also met her mother, and her mother is just a, another fantastic human being, and um, I just kind of, I just wanted to bring her on the show and kind of give people an idea of the kind of, uh, uh, the kind of people that actually buy my machines, who actually use radionics. And kind of give you, you know, give the audience just a little bit of an idea of, of the, you know, of the, of the demographic here. So um, anyway, so please, little Miss Balboa, could you possibly tell us a little bit about yourself? And like I, I'm, I know for a fact that you are a, a bit of a clairvoyant. Could you kind of tell us how that all started and kind of give us a little bit of history about it? You know, tell us some of your your adventures through life with this unique talent, and you know, kind of give the audience a little bit of a inside view as to what you're all about. Sure, sure. All right. Well, I, yes, I met Dr. Mulder, um, which I was super geeked out about, ladies and gentlemen. I was hopping up, bouncing off the walls, and to meet him and Joshua P. Warren, because they're both like a pair of my heroes. And uh, he made a joke about, oh, never meet your heroes, because you'll be disappointed. And I was not. He is just as cool as he sounds. But, uh, oh, yeah, shucks. I went the Finding Your Magic conference with Joshua P. Warren. So that's where I met Dr. Mulder. And I wanted to meet him in person and thank him for the boxes. I bought my first wishing machine about a year ago. And I tested it on small things that weren't too out there that could manifest rather quickly. And they worked. So it's um, it's been really cool. I've used it for um, money or just good luck or, um, you know, for... I don't know, scheduling purposes, little things that I would like to go in my favor. It kind of gave it a boot to go quicker. So, and I'm in my um, late twenties for that age demographic there. So it um, was really cool to meet him in person. And I feel like this community in general, outside of radionics, but just thinking outside the box, not so much to what, you know, society and academia would like us to focus on really attracts a special group of people that are meant to elevate and be in this boutique uh, kind of conversations that we're in and community. And it was, everybody that was there was a kindred spirit in a sense. So it was, it was really nice and refreshing and it was just a neat time. I was, I was super geeked out, but I, I got to talking to Dr. Mulder about it. And um, I actually brought to, to his attention um, a little, issue that I've been having in my personal life that I wanted to have the wishing machines focus on, uh, which was getting an undesirable out of my life. And uh, we discussed uh, different avenues for that. So the wishing machines really can be used for anything. Um, but we started talking about uh, clairvoyance because I uh, brought that up in conversation for, we were talking about 800 million different things, but I was born this way. Um, I, I know everybody has a different experience. And when somebody says that they're clairvoyant, it could be categorized in many different things. But for my own personal experience, um, my mother noticed it in church the first time that she saw that I was gifted. <clears throat> I was three years old. We're Catholic. And we were in church. And I pointed, this was during the Eucharist when the priest is blessing the uh, Eucharist. I pointed up above the altar and I started shouting in church, mommy, I see angels. I see angels. She looked and she didn't see anything, but I saw the angels and I 
remember exactly what they look like. One, they were, they were female. There was one to the left and one to the right, the one on the left. And they were both, and I've seen this in my readings and in my research that I've been going about that angels are very, very, very tall. And looking back at it, yeah, they were really tall. They were about, maybe if I had to put a number on it, they were about eight feet tall. And they had um, these beautiful white gowns on. And um, one the one of the female angels on the left, she was black. And she had um, short, uh, kind of a shorter afro to it. And she was playing the harp. And the other angel on the right, was white and she had maybe like shoulder length, uh, gold, corn colored golden hair. And she was playing the trumpet and I couldn't hear the music, but I saw them playing the instrument. And so my mom just looked at me and I was, I was super excited. I was like, you don't see it. (laughs) She was like, be quiet. So, but after that, from that day, she knew that I was gifted and my mom's side of the family, um, is like this. And I guess it goes back uh, in the blood lineage uh, that there's a child born this way um, throughout the bloodlines, and I happen to be that one. Uh, so that's, and she's, oh my gosh, I really don't know how I would have combated this or gotten through it without my mom because seeing all this stuff growing up, you know, I'm, I'm seeing spirits. And when I, okay, again, my personal experience, because I know everybody who says they're clairvoyant, it could be different for everybody. For me, when I see, a spirit. And when I say that, I mean that somebody who was once human who crossed over, who just no longer lives in the physical plane, they look just as 3d and solid as you and I walking the street, like a pedestrian crossing the street or somebody you pass up when you're in the supermarket. That's how solid they look. They don't look dead and ghostly or anything like how Hollywood perpetuates them to be. That's how I see them like as they were. And so I had been seeing that I had seen, unfortunately, uh, demons, uh, you know, lower vibrational beings. I saw my first demon when I was five. Um, and it was right when I woke up and it, uh, for, it, like there was a shadow casted cause my dad woke up really early to take a shower. So the light was casting a little bit of light in the room. And I saw like these bunny ears out of nowhere. And I looked and my mom and my three sisters were asleep on the bed and there was nobody there. So I just thought it was a shadow creature playing with me. And then it started approaching me closer and closer and it turned into demon horns and it jumped out. The shadow actually came 3D and jumped out and tried to grab me. And I threw myself on the bed and I started screaming. So that was my first encounter with anything negative that I remember. Um, And it's been anywhere and everywhere in between. And I have these experiences with animals too, um, to be able to communicate with them. Not all the time. So for me, it really varies. Like the closer I am with a person, the more... I'm going to get revealed to me. It's, it happens where it's random and it's a stranger that I don't know that I have a message for that I'll be told. And when I get my message, I hear it telepathically as if it's my own thought that I'm thinking, but it's not mine. It's, it's, I, it, that's the best way I can explain it. If that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah. And so it's, it's kind of everywhere in between. So that's kind of where I'm at. And that's what I want to focus my life on is, uh, harnessing that and just raising the vibration of the planets and helping people and helping people cross and things like that. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I just really think it's cool. Cause I mean, for example, you just told me out of the blue, you said, Brad, this year, uh, August and September are going to be fantastic months for you. Also, look out for January. That's going to be another fantastic month. And I and my question to you is, where did you come up with this? Because I, I think you're right. I mean, how did this pop in your head? I mean, just all of a sudden you just said, it just said, tell Dr. Mulder, you know, the, you know this month, this month, and uh, this month are going to be uh, great months for him. Or how did that happen? I'm just curious. It, it just, I think that it just kind of comes like as if it's a random thought that, you know, it just across your head that's why I hear the messages but I I can't explain it it's a sensation that I have um that I know it that it's not a thought I've secured my own uh so it's something to be said and again like it's really tough for me to explain it if you you don't have the ability to know Mm -hmm. and be able to recognize and discern like what thought is yours and and what has been that's just kind of how it happens for me but yeah yeah you, 
you're kind of breaking up on us uh, there, uh, little Miss Balboa. Hello? Yes, sorry, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we hear you fine now. Um, so, okay. uh, yeah, so little Miss Stealth, what do you think of all this? Wow, it sounds, it sounds really, um, it sounds like a wonderful gift and something to develop, and it's also really super awesome that uh, Ms. Balboa here is wanting to work with the light and the light forces with her gifts. It isn't always that way, so it's, it's great that, um, that she wishes to serve the, the white hats, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, um, team yes. all the way. Uh, <laughs> good, good. Yep. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, I've noticed. Uh, you know, it seems like the people that, that, uh, that are heavily involved with radionics or what have you, we all are basically on the same team. We're all on the same side. I don't know if that's just happenstance or if that just seems to be the personalities that, uh, that seem to, you know, kind of just kind of gather this way. Because I've noticed that, you know, people are, a lot of them are very independent minded. Yeah, definitely. I would agree. Yeah, and like I was saying, this community, it really does kind of attract um, people who want to work with the light. I, Like you've said many times in the show before, and what you've kind of forewarned with radionics is that the boxes don't know any different. If you tell it to do something, it's just going to do it, and it can't discern good from evil. So that is always something to... You know be aware of but, but i do feel especially as the more time passes that i walk the planet and the people that i meet with that are they're intuitive i've i've met them they've never like really allowed them in my circle but of course they've come across my path with people who have these abilities but the the ones that serve the dark so to speak it's interesting because those people that i've met were not born intuitive they have studied with wizards and dark practitioners they've studied it so it's not anything that came to them naturally and from my understanding from my community when you are not born with the gift and you study it and you learn it yeah, you can you can move molehills but when you're trying to move mountains that's when you have to get a coven of witches and wizards to do it again I, I'm saying this very respectfully because I know we have a very colorful audience and, and everybody is into different things. And I mean this with all the love and compassion and understanding. But for me, for my life's journey and path, I uh, need to stay in uh, the white light and focus on those things. But, you know, to each their own and uh, blessings to everybody who practices that. You know, it's just as long as you're not hurting anybody else or yourself, I bless it. And even if you're not, well, I'm still praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know and, and that's what i've always said you know the most important part of these machines is the operator you know and it's like you said it, it's based on the operator's intent of what they're trying to accomplish and you know it's just garbage in garbage out and i agree with you i agree with you but it just for whatever reason it seems to attract we seem to attract the right people and they're all you know i got to meet uh I would say at least uh, half the people there at that conference own machines, and you know I got to hear a lot of uh, a lot of positive uh, you know results that they've gotten from these machines. And I think we have one or one or two people who said, well, it really wasn't working that well for me. You know, they were into the wands. They said, well, the wands seem to work better for me than the machines. And I think it just kind of boils down to you know. Uh, different strokes for different folks certain modalities will work better for one person than they do others and I and I, I think uh, Joshua in his first conference he was kind of uh, bring, you know trying to bring that home to people that you know there's just certain uh, you know belief systems certain personality types or whatever that work better with different types of technology quote unquote and um, but for the most part uh, I would say a good 90 95 percent plus of the people that have used these machines have gotten you know fantastic results. I mean, um, I got a letter just the other day uh, from a woman who bought uh, one of the, my machines and this uh, was concerning a real estate uh, issue she had. And apparently, you know, uh, she got uh, you know she got a lot of this thing resolved or a lot, a lot of this uh, this uh, you know this real estate transaction. She was able to you know make part of it work. And when you know before she used a machine. Uh, there was no results, but now she's starting to get results. 
And and that's what I'm saying. You know, it just depends on the people, the individual. Definitely. And, you know, and a note on that about the machines, if you guys are having hiccups with them or something that you're asking for is not coming into fruition as quickly as you'd like, Dr. Mulder has said it, I don't know, a million and ten times before in the past. When is my when is my wish going to come to pass? Or what, what I'm asking for, or when is it going to come to pass? It's going to happen when it's going to happen. And you've got to understand, much like making a wish or in general, like on a star or saying a prayer, it is the same breakdown with the wishes. I mean, this is a prayer that's ongoing and that's what this apparatus does for you. It's, it's constantly praying for you and putting your intention out there. So um, I'm going to give you an example. Like I said, I was having success with the machines and then I did tell Dr. Mulder there were a couple of things I was asking for wasn't happening. I was not seeing any movement. And then I would go and uh, re-meditate on it and change the dials and everything. Still no movement. But you got to understand with the machines, if there's something going on in your life or you have people in your life that are creating blockage that you're not aware of, you're not surrounding yourself with the right people or the right circumstances, the right energy, then you're not going to get the results. Sometimes the people you're around can put out subconscious counteractive energy that will block the things that you're asking and wishing for. As soon as I took certain people out of my life, I have, I, I, this has been the most transformative year of my entire life. And I don't say that lightly. I'm, I mean, I will never forget 2021. And, and it is after I removed certain people out of my life and it, and then the machines started doing their thing again. So you have to really look if you're running into that problem with the machines, you know, what are you surrounding yourself with the right people? And this could be romantic relationships, even your family sometimes, you know what I mean? Like you need to take a break and step back or your job or where you're living at. Are you thinking about moving and relocating? Sometimes your energy where you're at in your space is directly influencing the things that you're asking for. And the machines also will move things so that it can align for what you're asking for so the energy can flow that way. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. And um, that's what I've noticed too, like in my own personal life. I I try to live in a controlled environment where I surround myself with people that I feel are positive, that, are, that uh, provide a positive influence in my life. And the ones who are kind of on the negative side of things, uh, I, I'm like you. I just... I just basically just jettison them out of my life or try to ignore them or try to, you know, not cross paths with them. And, um, and like I said, it's just a reason for that because I agree with you. When you're dealing with negative people, that energy will start to rub off on you. It will start to, um, you know, uh, block some of the things you're trying to accomplish or affect your own personal thinking. And I don't need that any more than you or Little Miss Stuff or any of the other listeners of, of the show. I mean, we're all trying to do positive things uh, with these machines and, you know, and whatever else we're doing in life. And we're not out there trying to, like you said, harm people or uh, make the world, a, you know, a, a negative place or, or a, uh, a very destructive place. We're trying to create pos positivity and trying to give people their power back where they control their own fate. That's the way I feel about it. Absolutely. What about you, Little Miss Delph? Have you had any um, situations like that where you've seen blockage with the machines and if you changed something in your life or you did something different that you saw a shift? Um, I think that that's probably got a lot to do with some different things. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate you bringing this point, too, because I think Dr. Mulder and I haven't discussed that aspect. And this is you're, you're the first person to really um, to, to bring this forth. And that's. I think that's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you can't heal in the environment that made you sick. I'm sorry. You can't. Yeah, you can't grow a rose bush and a rock pile. So also take that into consideration, folks. Like, if you're asking like, a relationship or something, oh, I want him or her to change, this, that, and the other, well, maybe do some inside work and look at yourself. Like, what do you have to change? Uh, you know, because it's like we can project and point the finger at other people, but ultimately we got to look in the mirror. We really do. If mm -hmm. we don't start with ourselves, we expect anything else or anyone else to change. And maybe you shouldn't try to change people. Maybe those people don't just serve your highest good anymore. And they were there for a season. You know, like it's it's tough. Believe me, we've all been through that. But, you know, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Well oh, yeah. said. Yeah. 
I mean, and I've always noticed too, you know, I, even when I've dealt with negative people, I learned a valuable lesson from it, a valuable life lesson, and it made me a better person. And, you know, at the time I'm thinking, what the hell, Why? what did I do to deserve this person to pull this kind of crap on me? And uh, then I realized, well, you know, in hindsight, I need to have this hap happen so I can be, because it made me grow. You know, I, I, you know, I became a little bit more, I wouldn't say skeptical, but a little bit more cautious when having to deal with, you know, people of that personality type. So in the future, whenever they come across my path, I'm able to handle them a whole lot better, and, uh, and it's just—I uh, agree with you. It's, uh, I look at it, even though it might be a, seem as a negative at the time, it turned out to be a positive in the long term because you're—you know—you're able to grow because of it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Exactly. Well, but uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I just Chris wanted to ask Ms. Balboa here if if you're um. If you do readings or if you're thinking about becoming more public with your gifts in terms of like a YouTube channel or if you work with tarot or what kind of I, things, how, where I are you do, going with all this beautiful stuff that you've got? I do. Honestly, um, I know this is probably going to sound very cliche, but I am still kind of praying and meditating on it. And I'm just asking the Lord to show me where I need to go and what it is that I need to do. Um, so I'd say personally, I'm going to be ready after the summer to kind of start really pursuing this full time on a public scale. Um, cool. because I, I really struggle with doing this for a career, um, in terms of like, you know, making it a business because, and I know that that aligns with other people, uh, you know, for them to, you know, cause obviously you're a small business, you know, you make your profit, but for me, there's so many people in the world that need this kind of help and they just, don't, and this is, oh man, I think I was telling you this, Dr. Mulder, this is the thing that bugs me to no end because I have the eye for discernment and I can see right through people, see if you're a freaking fake or if you're truly anointed. Instagram and Twitter are great business tools, but my gosh, can you just put out and say you are and uh, you are this, that, and the other, and people will fall for it. I cannot tell you how many fake psychics, fake readers, fake energy workers that are out there just for a profit and just because it's trendy right now. And they take advantage. We're really living in a time where people are very, very lost and people are making subconscious and conscious decisions to be children of the light and children of the dark. And people are really profiting on that and feeding off of that. And I think that is one of the biggest sins that you could do is to take someone in their most vulnerable moment and and especially people who are lost and really trying to find a source of light and to take that and be an energy vampire and just totally violate that there's so many fakes out there so for me i'm really gonna have to think about that because i would like to go public i would like to help people on a bigger scale but i i need to do a couple more realignment things for myself and then I, when I'm ready, I'll definitely let you guys know, you know, and then maybe we could do group meetups and, and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not sure how it'll go, but it'll go. But that's another thing I wanted to bring up too. And I don't know if you two have seen that uh, in your own experiences, but just be very careful and, uh, you know, just use your discernment when you're going through and looking through people. And the best people to work with is, is word of mouth. Somebody, you know, that has worked with somebody so you can have a firsthand account because anybody can put anything in a bio they really can you know and say they have all this experience they've done this they don't they've done that um i know some of the most gifted photoshoppers on the planet so mm -hmm. be very careful Speaking of yeah day, yeah. We're, yeah we're cgi like you know all this stuff that there are people talking on tv and it's really not that person we're living in that day and age what makes you think that they can't do that on the instagram account to fake something so just be really careful with that Oh yeah, yeah. You and I met a Photoshop uh, over the conference. That's his job. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You remember? Yeah, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> Woo! Gotta be careful, people. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's definitely interesting, uh, for sure. But uh, no, I just kind of wanted to go into that with you. Also, um, angels. We wanted to discuss angels because that, you know, you know, I know you touched on that earlier. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you told me, Doctor Mulder, you have all these angels around you. I'm thinking, 
Oh no way! I am not that. I am not that pious of a person. No, I could not have, you know, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, you know that kind of. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, uh, following or not really a following, but that kind of protection uh, from, uh, you know, from the, you know, from above. And uh, I tell you, from and I'll be honest with you, from some of the situations I've been in in my life, and I was able to walk out smelling like a rose. I have to admit, somebody was looking out for me. So you may be very, you may be right about that one. But um, I really felt oh, yeah. humbled when you told me that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna elaborate on what Dr. Mulder's talking about. So when I was talking to him at the conference, maybe we were 20 minutes into the conversation at this point, I saw, and this is where I'm talking about, like everybody's gifts are different. Um, but as sometimes I can see people's uh, spiritual teams that are behind them or spirits standing beside beside them. But right behind Dr. Mulder's left hand shoulder, I saw the seven major archangels standing right behind him in a very defensive mode, ready to fight for him. And it's interesting that it was on the left hand side because the left hand side of your body and the, your left hand, when you're receive, this is also a note for everybody. When you're receiving something like a gift or like money when you're at work, um, always energy so you're taking it in and if you're giving something to somebody you give it with your right so you put it out there so that's a little tip for everybody but it was interesting that i saw it on his left hand side because the left hand side is the receiving side so you are receiving the anointing and the blessing from the seven archangels so that was that's what dr mold was talking about that i saw the seven archangels behind him and they really like him so if anybody's thinking about messing with dr molder i would think twice uh, because they are there for him. It's true. Yeah. It's true. I told you anointing. And, and you know, it's uh, it's funny that you say that. Um, that you know, you don't feel like you should. Not that you're not worthy of the blessings, but that you're not that much of a person to have it. You know, I have met people that have zero zero faith to them and i'm not just saying like from a religious connotation to put it on you know like any sort of god or deity like they just straight up don't believe in anything they just think we're a clump of cells that happen to have some form of a consciousness and when we die we rot that's it but some of those people that i have met i have seen spirit teams behind them that are so strong so even if you don't you're maybe in that category you don't believe in anything you're dab you're dabbling with it you're kind of looking for something you there's this phrase that says you and what army and i've seen a really cool meme where there was this like group of bullies that were in front of another person saying that you and what army and they still get out the army behind the person that appeared to be to the naked eye standing alone an angel team right behind them so you really don't know if you're talking you know like for dr Mulder's example if you've had close calls in your life or situations where you just really shouldn't be here or you should be in a different situation but you somehow came out unscathed that is your divine team working with you and it's not even necessarily just your angels it is maybe people that have passed in your life that really loved you a lot and are still looking out for you and your other spirit guides and your ancestors in general just having your back there is a very strong team behind you, whether you're religious, or you believe in any of this stuff or not. It's it's there. I'm telling you. So oh, yeah. that's. Uh, yeah, I that's, mean, and like and when I'm dealing like with any kind of situation uh, where, you know, uh, an innocent person is being attacked or they're under threat by, you know, by some scumbag, some evil person. Uh, my go to guy is Michael. I, he is my go to guy. I don't care what anybody says. You know, some people may say, oh, get a demon after them. Nah, I'll, I'll just stick with Michael. Because one thing about it, I know it's going to be just, and I know I'm on the right side. Exactly. And, and exactly. Michael's a badass. Michael's a oh, badass. He is not one to be played with. <laughs> That's oh, for yeah. sure. Oh, He's yeah. He's very he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, like I said, he's just my go-to guy. You know, I, I have to admit I have a little bit of a man crush on, on Michael. And he's just a he's he's just a badass. He's just out there, you know, you know, uh, taking care of business and doing it in the right way. And um, I, it's just that's just me. And when it comes to yeah, some people are talking about well, you can get a demon to do this, demon to do that. That doesn't really resonate with me. I'm sorry, I just don't. I'm sure you know maybe maybe with some people, some black magicians, uh, they don't have a problem with that. Me personally, eh, I feel kind of icky. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I mean, I've done right. it before, but it just doesn't. It just doesn't feel right, and uh, but like I said, when I deal with Michael on certain circumstances, I, I feel like I'm in the right corner. 
Right. And again, that's not to offend anybody because I know that we have a colorful audience and, you know, it's different strokes for different folks, you know, blessings to all of you. But, you know, it's like what Dr. Mulder said, it is imperative that you do what resonates with you because if you start stepping out of that space and it starts making any, it'll come to you in different ways. You'll get a headache. You're going to feel dizzy. Your stomach will get upset or you'll have an inability to sleep or you lose your appetite. It's just the minor things you don't realize, but energy has a very serious pull. So just be careful. And, you know, if you are wanting to dabble into other things, do your research. I highly encourage that because even working with the angels, an example of St. Anthony is my patron saint that I work with. That is my buddy. I know we have passed life. I've been working with him since I was a child. He has never ever failed me ever not once and i'm gonna give you an example i was uh i well i'm not gonna say where i live but i was in an area that is not uh i was driving through an area that was not the best um and it's pretty nationally known for not being the best and i was pumping gas and i was in the process of moving so i had my id my social security card all of my bank cards and cash in my wallet and I am always over the top about having my wallet on me, but I must have just not been in the right mental space and I was pumping gas and I left my wallet on my trunk and I took off and my wallet dropped and Ooh. I was freaking out because this, I mean, this this place has been wrapped about and I was just like, oh my goodness, like I am so screwed, like identity theft up the butt. So I was just <laughs> waiting for and so I, I set my intentions and I prayed to St. Anthony and I asked him, you know, to please bring my wallet back to me and all of everything that was in there and for me to come out unscathed and for everything to be okay. Nothing. And this is always, I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? Like, have I not like giving you enough homage? I heard nothing. And this was for months. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, I kept checking my credit score and everything. Nothing happened. I ended up just getting a new ID. I was like, okay. So my address was for that ID was still to my mom's place. And so she told me about two weeks after I lost my wallet that I had gotten a letter in the mail from somebody that she didn't know. And so I, when I go to visit her, I just get my mail. Then I told her, I'll just put it to the side. I didn't think anything of it. But then when I go to visit like five months later, it is a letter written from somebody that was behind me in line to pump gas. And he wrote that he saw that my wallet fell and he took out all the contents of my wallet for me, cash included, and put it in the envelope for me and sent it to me. And he left his number and he said to please contact him what, when I got my belongings back to let him know that I got it. And I was like, this is a five month late phone call. But, and I called him and that's, I set my intention that day for St. Anthony and St. Anthony works very closely with the spirit of uh, baby Jesus. So it's very, very potent because of the most pure thing on the planet uh, amongst us humans is children. That's why they're targeted the way they are. Um, so, you know, it, it, working with especially the infant spirit of Jesus Christ, I mean, the power in that. So, but there is a trade off. So, whenever you do that and he comes through, he loves green candles or tangerines, oranges, things like that. So, there's a give and take. It's a light one, you know, but like you're saying, when you're working with darker entities, there may be a give and take that they ask for something in exchange that is not so sweet as an orange or a tangerine and a candle, you know, so keep that in mind. But if you're looking for a saint to work with who will just give you results, and the other thing that St. Anthony asks is um, it, after he comes through for you, tell people about him. So that way more people can know and he can help more people. If you look up his story, it's a really beautiful one. I have books on him and it, it's um, I, all the prayer cards for him. I have rosaries in his dedication. I have his statue on my altar. He's amazing. That is my buddy. And I hope I get to cross paths with him somehow in real time at some point. Obviously not on this plane, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'll give you an example. Like going, going back to uh, Michael, I mean... Uh, Liz, in the, she's in the military, and uh, even they hand out uh, prayer cards with Michael on there, you know, like for uh, when they're about ready to go into battle. That tells me all I need to know. That tells me all I need to know. And so uh, I've even used those prayer cards, you know, as witness samples whenever we're dealing with the bad guys. So, and that's what I'm saying. You know, you could take that uh, statue or anything that represents uh, uh, your angel and put him on the input plate of a machine, tune it, 
to project that energy toward you or toward a target. And uh, I mean, you've got that energy projected at you 24 seven. Yep, I agree. I definitely agree. It's, it's all mm -hmm. it's all good. You work with stuff in the light. I mean, you just get really nice, nice results, smooth results. It might take longer. I've heard that, but uh, you know, hey, good things come to those who wait. You know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, what do you think about all of this little bit stuff? Oh, I think it's fascinating, and it's just uh, it's just a really nice conversation. I'm I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it. Oh, I don't okay. really have too much to interject because it seems to have a, a life of its own that's very that I think is very beneficial and pleasant. So, oh, okay, that's what I think. Oh, okay. Well, I am glad that you're thinking that. That makes me feel better knowing that you are thinking and you are thinking that. Thank you so very much. Oh yes. Well, but you know you can interject. I'm just letting you know. Oh, I that, know. I always interject when I feel moved, but right now it's yeah. it's it's very nice. I think this is great. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. I don't want to yep. feel like you're being left out. Oh, no, no, no. No, not oh, at okay. all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I can ask you, do you have any um, angels that you are, are more attracted to or drawn to or any um, entities that you work with um, more specifically when you're really in need of something or something comes up or any experiences that you've had? Well, I think that um, when I really have a, a hard situation, I pray to Jesus. Like if, um, uh, yeah, like uh, praying for people, like there was a church in somewhere in the Middle East that got completely obliterated and it was really hard to take. And I just was thinking about what kind of remote influence I could do or what should I do? And I was praying and I just felt Jesus telling me just that it's all in his hands and to um, to back away. So, yeah, that, that was, you know, a small thing, but definitely, um, definitely a fan of all the, all the, all the entities in the, um, who are giving forth the light in this time of uh, extreme spiritual battle that we're in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. And another conversation that uh, Miss Balboa and I had uh, concerned the, the, um, the Mandela effect. Now, could you possibly tell uh, the audience some of the things you experienced personally with the Mandela effect? I, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Josh's tech guy last night. His name's Mobius. Dan, I mean, this guy's a top notch engineer, super intelligent. And he's just telling me some of the things that have happened to him personally. Like uh, one day something would appear, the next day it, it would disappear, and he's like wondering, am I going crazy? Now, at, could you kind of give the audience a, little, uh, a few examples of some of the things that you've experienced yourself? Me? Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sorry. I don't know if it was to a little bit south. Oh, my gosh. Dr. Mulder and I probably had almost a two-hour conversation about this. Um, man, the Mandela effect, uh, you know, okay, first to bring it, it's to set the stage for it. Dr. Mulder and I both agree that after 2012 is when we really started seeing the effects of this. And there wasn't really a name for it until about maybe late 2014, 15, when the first big, big global phenomena was everybody going back and forth saying Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 80s and another group was saying are you crazy he just recently passed away mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what I was with Dr. Holder was is my uh, 11th grade teacher um, and this was during Black History Month too that we were uh, doing this specific test we were learning about major um, influencers um, and the African-American community that, you know, um, had made great history. Obviously, Nelson Mandela's on that list. Now, my younger sister and I specifically remembered, because we all had the same teacher, we all went to the same school, having a test about how he was captured, how he was killed, when he died, and down to the details of the funeral procession in the 80s. So we right. had a huge test on that. We had to study for a week, and we would do study groups. Now we were coming out later in the in when uh, what year is it on record that he died? 
I uh, see. I think it's when Obama was still in office. It's either 2014 or 2015. I'm not sure which one. <clears throat> I remember seeing it all over, the place and I'm like, "Wait, what?" And my sister too was like, "What the heck is going on?" And the, we're like, "We actually have the papers that of our test." To the specifics of of how he died before we were even born, mm-hmm. like what the heck? So that was like mm-hmm. the big one that started a little phenomena about it. But okay, the Bernstein Bears, people are saying it's spelled Stain, S T A I N. I remember it, S T E I N. And then uh, we've got um, the S- Sally Fields. Everybody remembers. Well, not everybody can analyze, but <clears throat> I remember it being Fields plural. Apparently, it's Sally mm-hmm. Field. Same thing with Chris Reeves. Apparently now it's not plural; it's Reeve. So, and there are there was there's YouTube videos on it. You can go look it up. Some people, have, some independent um, journalists, have done really great jobs of putting together these little micro documentaries about it. There is paperwork with him with his autograph with the S on it, but it, it's recorded as Reeve. So, and then um, Sally Fields' uh, famous Oscar acceptance speech. I remember it as you. You like me. You really, really like me. And now it's you love me. You really, really love me. I don't remember that at all. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting, though, about Sally Fields is that her brother is one of the lead, um, I believe it's scientists, if I'm not mistaken, on the CERN project for which they are have that giant machine that is recreating tiny little black holes every time they power it up. And so mm-hmm. there's a lot of speculation that that machine right there could be causing these little micro ripple effects in time to change tiny little things. Um, and then you brought up right. some other examples too. Oh yeah. Um, see, uh, I even had this verified with Mobius. You know, he was a Star Wars geek when he was a kid. All right. His thing was uh, R2D2, which was the gold colored android type robot. And, uh, you know, he, he said, I know for a fact he was gold from head to toe. There was nothing uh, strange about him. You know, he was completely gold. But in this reality, he has a silver leg from the kneecap down on, on the right. Uh, so he has, a, he has a silver leg now in this reality. And he says, I know for a fact that was not the case when he was a kid. Because he said, I, you know, he lived, breathed, uh, you know, Star Wars, you know, had the models, all that stuff, had a posters. You know, all that, all that good stuff. And now, uh, Darth Vader's mask, it used to be solid black. Okay, there was nothing unusual about it. It was solid black. Now, in this reality, on the mouthpiece you know, of the uh, mask, which is sort of a triangle, each point on that triangle has like a silver square now in this reality. I mean, it's just little things like that. I mean, and he said, pardon me? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I was saying I'm not even a Star Wars person and I can even remember just because Star Wars is so famous that that mask was for sure all black. And then the line too, the famous line, again, I don't, I'm not a Star Wars person, but the famous line is Luke, I am your father. Now on every historical piece you can find, the actual line is no, I am your father. No, it's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. It was but very Luke, big I am your shows father. like Family Guy. Yeah, very big shows like Family Guy and other uh, shows like that have emulated that scene, and it's "I am your father." So, I mean, I'm telling you, this this thing. I mean, I, I'm sure there are a ton of other different examples. Little yeah. Self, do you remember anything differently that is supposedly not what it was? Um, uh, not particularly, except for the Bible verse of the um. The lion shall lay down with the lamb, and now apparently it's the wolf and the lamb, which, yeah, yeah, that's the big one that really kind of stuns me. Yeah, it's like the Lord's yeah. Prayer. I mean, how do you remember it? It's, uh, forgive us our blank as we forgive blank. How do you remember it, uh, little Miss Balboa? Uh, um, so, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Yeah. In this reality, I think you and I discussed this. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yeah, and then exactly. plus it switches back and forth. Plus it goes back and forth. That particular yeah, sometimes, verse, for whatever reason. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
sometimes the official Google search will say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But here, let me do a Google search right now. See what it says. That's what I'm talking about. There's a really big silent war going on way behind the scenes. And I'm, I'm talking about we're not we might not learn about it for a while or maybe we're on the precipice of this just totally exploding and flooding over. And we do get disclosure on what's actually going on. But there is a very big war going on um, that we are some of us are probably aware of, but others is going to come as a total shock. Oh, yeah. If you're picking up one and putting down. Oh, yeah, I totally understand. I mean, and people are wondering, okay, what the heck does this have to do with radionics? Well, this proves that reality is fluid. It, it can change. And uh, yep. what are you doing when you change a box? You're changing your reality. And that's I just want to drive that home to people. They're thinking, well, I didn't tune into this thing uh, to listen about some, uh, you know, a crackpot theory about how, uh, you know, the Mandela effect. Well, I assure you, number one, it does exist. There is an effect. Um, and I know from multiple sources, I've talked to people who are highly intelligent, and they are trained observers, and they have noticing the same thing I'm noticing, and they're not crackpots. These people are scientists. And, uh, you know, and get, yeah. You're listening to the wrong show, because we talk about everything and anything that is outside of the box. Yeah, exactly. And um, I know that we were having a, one discussion with a gentleman. He was like looking at us like, uh, you're crazy. But, you know, the thing about it is he remembered when the sun was always white. You remember that? He's from a different timeline than we are. Because everything that we were bringing up, that's the way he remembers it. You know, the way things are now were the way that he remembers it. Okay, it didn't change for him. He's always been in this timeline. And so, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's kind of, I find that kind of funny that, you know, people like us, I mean, you're in the same timeline that I'm in, and so is uh, Little Miss Stealth, and so is uh, Dr. Liz. I mean, we're all in the same timeline, but there are people out there who are looking at this, and they're thinking, what the hell are you people talking about? It's always been like this. And I and what and the thing that I always question is, who are these people? Are they... Are we the are we the outsiders or are they the outsiders? I mean, are we have we stepped into something in a different um, reality? And uh, but they're, the reality that they're in has always been that way. They're you know we're just uh, we're kind of interlopers. And uh, I wonder about that. That's really the strangest part that I've seen. The, the strangest part of this effect is the fact that some people are from here and some people are not. Yeah. And I'm looking on Wikipedia today. It recognizes uh, that the Lord's Prayer. You're breaking up. What'd you say? Oh, right. I'm looking on Wikipedia today, and it's it gives us the the debt version of the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Yeah. And that was just like I said. That was seems to go back and forth for whatever reason. And um, I find that kind of strange too. How can it, you know, you know, we're looking at the uh, the holy word of God, you know, the sacred word of God inside of a you know a text that's been you know read millions of times over the centuries, that's uh, been printed millions of times over the centuries, and physically it will go back and forth. The print will go back and yeah. forth. Yeah. And and so I just find it fascinating, you know, how that works. But uh, no, it's you know it's uh it's really a uh, interesting how um, you know how all this stuff has really happened but uh, anyway yeah we're kind of closing in almost 50 minutes here uh, before we uh, sign off is there anything else you want to bring to the table um, little Miss Balboa uh, um, <laughs> I think it would be useful for um, everybody who is interested in working with angels and uh, kind of seeing what they're about if you already don't work with them but maybe trying to work with another angel and uh, uh, Dr. Mulder and Little myself, I'll send you the um, the list of the archangels and how to do this. But when we were at the Vegas conference, we were looking at the sigils for the uh, all the different major seven. I believe it's eighteen and mm -hmm. eighteen or twenty one. So it was quick. You just look. All right, which sigil pops out to you? Which one resonates with you? For whatever reason, don't don't overthink it. You pick that sigil and see which archangel that is associated with and that archangel has stepped up and it's you know said that you need to work with them so 
um, maybe because each arch archangel has a prayer um, written out for them and just do research on the archangel and see what it is they're about, um, what their prayer is, what they ask for, what they help uh, you with and work with that archangel for 30 days, say their prayer or try to live your life by whatever it is that they teach and what they help for and see what changes happen in your life for 30 days. So thir there's a challenge for everything else on Instagram and all these other different social media platforms. So why not do a 30 day angel challenge to help yourself? spiritually that sounds great i'll do yeah um i'll uh drop my email in the chat and definitely take advantage of that i'd love that yeah and i think it'd oh, be really fantastic. cool like yeah i just i mean you know all we need as much light as possible and just you know it does not hurt to bring in another angel or somebody that you didn't know was always there looking out for you and bring them to center stage and start working with them Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. Well, this has definitely been one heck of a um, one heck of a, a conversation here, uh, little Miss Balboa, and I really do appreciate your time on yeah. this. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, and definitely we want to bring you back on. Um, I got a couple little things, a couple little subjects in the future that I think uh, I'd love to have your input on uh, concerning this. But um, anyway, on that note, um, I guess. Uh, we we'll call it an evening and um, see a uh, little miss stuff. Is there anything else that you want to say before we close? Oh, no, just other than um, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. This Great. was honestly really a nice to having you. Thank you. This is a dream come true and a pleasure. And I love you both so much. And Dr. Liz, we love you. Sending you our blessings and prayers and yes. to everyone listening. Absolutely. You know, just all of you. Be blessed and be well. All right. Well, thank you. And on that note, everybody, be sovereign. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.